In this organic chemistry tutorial, we're going to talk about chirality and enantiomers. By the end of this lesson, you're going to learn three key skills. You're going to be able to tell right away whether a molecule is chiral or achiral. You're going to be able to quickly identify chirality centers on a molecule. And finally, if given a chiral molecule, you're going to be able to draw the enantiomer really easily. I always encourage taking notes when you're studying organic chemistry, so make sure that you grab a paper and pen to follow along, or if you'd like a copy of the slides that I'm using today, just click the link below. And while you're at my website, make sure that you check out all of the other organic chemistry resources that I've got on there. Let's get started. A chiral object is an object that is not identical to its mirror image. The word chiral comes from a Greek word that means handed, probably because a hand is a really good example of an object that is chiral. So my hands are mirror images of one another. There's no way that I can superimpose one of my hands perfectly on the other hand. They're not identical, but they are mirror images. And so hands are chiral. So molecules are just very tiny objects and they can be chiral too. So for example, this molecule is 2-chlorobutane and it's chiral. This is its mirror image and there's no way that we can rotate or manipulate these mirror images around so that one can be totally superimposed on the other. So if you notice here, we've got both hydrogens pointing to the front towards you, both chlorines pointing back, but the alkyl groups are switched. So on this side, we've got an ethyl over here and a methyl over here. And for this molecule, we've got an ethyl pointing this way and a methyl pointing this way. So if I rotate this one to put the ethyl and the methyl back in line, we've now switched the direction of the chlorine and the hydrogen front to back. They're opposite on each molecule. So there's no way we can superimpose these. So in case you don't believe me, give it a try yourself. Here are the same two molecules. They are mirror images of each other. And no matter how you twist them around, you can't make them line up and look exactly alike. So because 2-chlorobutane can't be superimposed on its mirror image, we say that 2-chlorobutane is chiral. And we use a special word to describe the relationship between these two non-superimposable mirror images. We call them enantiomers of one another. Now many, many molecules, especially biological molecules, have this property of being chiral, but there are also many, many more molecules that are not chiral, and if a molecule is not chiral, we call it achiral. An achiral molecule can be superimposed on its mirror image. So here's an example. This is ethanol and the mirror image of ethanol. So here's a model of the ethanol molecule, and if I rotate it back and forth, about an axis that kind of goes through that center carbon right here. I am generating ethanol and the mirror image as I rotate it back and forth. So that means ethanol and its mirror image are the exact same molecule. And so ethanol is therefore achiral. A skill that you're going to need in order to pass organic chemistry is to be able to tell right away whether a molecule is chiral or achiral. And the quickest way to do this is to check whether the molecule has an internal plane or center of symmetry. Here's an example of an achiral molecule, and we can imagine cutting this molecule in half through this plane in the middle, and on either side, you have an identical half of the molecule. So this is called an internal plane of symmetry. And because we can do this, because this molecule has that internal plane of symmetry, we can say with 100% certainty that it is achiral. Here's another achiral molecule. This one has what's called a center of symmetry. You might also see this called an inversion center. The easiest way to understand a center of symmetry is to think of the center of symmetry as the zero, zero point on a coordinate system that's right in the very smack dab middle of the molecule. If you take any point on the molecule and change the sign of the coordinates, so invert them, you're going to find the exact same thing at the new point. So for example, if we say that this chlorine atom is at position 1, 1, then we invert those coordinates to get negative 1, negative 1, we will also find a chlorine atom at that point. And that's true for any other point on the molecule. It can be basically reflected right through that inversion center. Anytime a molecule has a center of symmetry like this, it will be achiral. 
Let's bring back this 3D model of our original molecule 2-chlorobutane. No matter what we do to this molecule, no matter how we look at it and rotate it around and change the view, there's no way that we can find an internal plane or center of symmetry for this molecule. Anytime that you find a molecule where you cannot do either of these two symmetry operations, the internal plane or the center of symmetry, the molecule is by definition chiral. So here's a practice problem. There is a group of molecules on this slide and you need to decide whether each of them is chiral or achiral. If you're using my slides, you can just pick them up and sort them into the boxes. And if you've got your own piece of paper, you can just redraw them and label them as chiral or achiral. And remember, the easiest thing that you can do is to evaluate whether each molecule has a planar center of symmetry. You can pause the video now to give this a try and I'll give the solution in just a minute. This first molecule is achiral. It has a plane of symmetry that cuts right through the center of the molecule, through that double bond, and through the CN group. This second molecule is chiral. There is no way that we can cut this molecule into equal halves, and there's no center of symmetry, so this must be chiral. This next one has a plane of symmetry going right through the middle. That's pretty easy to see. And the next one, this six-membered ring, also has a plane of symmetry going right through the middle. Finally, these last two up at the top are both chiral. There's no planes or centers of symmetry on either of these molecules. Now we're going to talk about the concept of chirality centers. When an sp3 hybridized atom is connected to four different groups, we call that atom a chirality center. So here we have an sp3 hybridized tetrahedral carbon atom, and it's connected to one, two, three, four different groups. And so we would say that that carbon atom is a chirality center. Usually it's pretty easy to find chirality centers on molecules. It's as simple as looking for tetrahedral atoms that are connected to four different groups. However, you might want to make sure that you remember about implicit hydrogen atoms. You can draw those in because hydrogen atoms are often one of the four groups on a chirality center, but they're not always drawn in explicitly. So for example, here's a molecule with a bromine. It's on a wedged bond, so that's bromine is pointing out at us. And it's also understood that there's a hydrogen atom on that carbon as well. It would be pointing away from us into the page. So we draw it on the dashed bond. And now we can clearly see that this carbon atom is bonded to four different groups, one, two, three, four. So it is in fact a chirality center. Heteroatoms, which just means atoms that aren't carbon, can also be chirality centers. For example, positively charged nitrogen atoms connected to four different groups are chirality centers. However, neutral nitrogens connected to three different groups and having one lone pair are not considered chiral. Even though technically we can think of the lone pair as one of four different things on that nitrogen atom, amines like this are actually rapidly inverting at room temperature, which means that they're going back and forth between the two mirror image configurations. And so it's impossible to isolate one enantiomer or the other. So they just aren't considered chiral molecules. Here are some other examples of heteroatoms that can be chirality centers, but it's less likely that you're going to run into these in your introductory organic chemistry course. It's important to clarify the difference between a molecule having chirality centers and being chiral. If a molecule has only one chirality center, it will be chiral. For example, this molecule below has a chirality center here, and that's the only chirality center that it has, so this molecule will be chiral. However, if a molecule has more than one chirality center, it may or may not be chiral because the way that the chirality centers are arranged could give the molecule a plane of symmetry. For example, these two molecules both have chirality centers. The molecule on the left is chiral. It has no plane or center of symmetry, but the one on the right has a plane of symmetry, so it's achiral. These molecules have a special relationship to each other. They're called diastereomers, and I'm going to talk about that in another lesson. Fascinatingly, it's also possible for a molecule to have zero chirality centers and still be chiral, as long as it passes the test of having no plane or center of symmetry. So an example of this phenomenon includes a type of molecule called an allene, where there are two consecutive double bonds. So I built an allene, 
And this, of course, only goes for allenes that are that have two different groups on each side of the allene. And so, as you can see, when I rotate this molecule around, there's no way that we can cut this in half. There's no plane of symmetry and there's no center of symmetry in this molecule. So even though none of these carbons is a chirality center, this molecule is still chiral. Time to do another practice problem. Here is a giant molecule. If you know what this is, let me know in the comments and you can pause the video now and give this a shot. See if you can identify all of the chirality centers on this great big molecule here. And here is the solution. Each of these carbons that I've circled is sp3 hybridized and connected to four different groups. Throughout your journey in organic chemistry, you're likely going to need to quickly draw the enantiomer of a chiral molecule, so here are two ways to do that. The first method is to reflect the molecule in an external mirror plane. So here's our chiral molecule, and I'm going to draw a dotted line here, that's my mirror. And now I'll draw the enantiomer by drawing the reflection of the original. Let's do another one. We'll draw our mirror here and draw the cyclohexane ring again. And now the chlorine and the OH group. Notice how I've kept the wedges as wedges and the dashes as dashes. I've just changed what side of the molecule I drew them on because that's what this would look like if it was a reflection of the original molecule. The other way that we can generate an enantiomer is to swap two groups on each chirality center that the molecule has. This usually means changing what's on a wedge to a dash and what's on a dash to a wedge. For example, in this molecule, our bromine atom is on a wedge. So I'll redraw the molecule exactly the same, except we'll change the bromine to being on a dash. The other group we swapped was the hydrogen, but it's not shown in either drawing. Here's another example of the swap method. I'll redraw my cyclohexane. I'm keeping the groups in the exact same spot. I'm just swapping the direction of two groups on each chirality center. So the OH was on a wedge, it's now on a dash. And the CL was on a dash, it's now on a wedge. Again, the other group that was swapped in both cases was the implicit hydrogen. Thanks for studying with me today. If this video was helpful for you, I'd love it if you could give it a like so it can reach even more people. And if you like this style of video, make sure you check out my website for more resources like this. Happy studying!